Russia's alpha dog Vladimir Putin is on his way to reclaiming the country's top job. The current president, Dmitry Medvedev, says he's ready to be prime minister under Putin's leadership. So the ruling tandem remains, but what does it mean for democracy in the country and how is this deal viewed in the West? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Jane Dutton. A job swap that will certainly benefit one man, Vladimir Putin. The Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev, backed his predecessor's bid for president and said he may well take the job of prime minister. But this role reversal has left many asking if Putin's return to the top job will take Russia back to its old ways when political opposition was removed from the national stage. Neve Barker has the story. Side by side, Russia's most powerful men enter the United Russia Congress to a rock star's welcome. The party and the nation have been left in limbo over which of these two men would run for president next year. Questions about to be answered. Speaking first, Prime Minister Putin handed over leadership of United Russia to President Medvedev. In recent years, a practice has been formed where the president leads United Russia's candidates. I believe this tradition must not be broken. I propose the list of elections on December 4th should be led by the current head of state, our president, Dmitry Medvedev. And then, from the Russian president, the biggest revelation of all, an end to months, if not years, of speculation. Given the proposal to head the party list, to get involved in party work and our successful performance in the next election, as well as my readiness to carry out practical work in the government, I believe it will be correct if this Congress supports the candidacy of the party chairman Vladimir Putin for the post of president of the country. Putin was quick to accept. The announcement paves the way for Putin's return to the Kremlin next year, possibly for another six-year term. Medvedev is set to assume the post of Prime Minister. The strategy, said Putin, was part of a plan drawn up years ago to maintain stability and ensure the interests of the country and a party that's about to face its toughest challenge yet. Perhaps what happens at this Congress matters much more than any other before it. The party of power is still hugely popular. But in recent months, they've seen their ratings slide, meaning that United Russia is unlikely to exert the same kind of dominance in the parliament as it has done in years gone by. But with Medvedev now assuming the role of party leader, United Russia hopes it will be able to get the votes of those who like the liberal tendencies of Medvedev, but are tired of Putin. Opposition groups have called the arrangement a sham. Also holding their own party conferences, some warn another Putin presidency will spark a revolution. Putin will become Lukashenko and then Mubarak, then Gaddafi. Unfortunately, the people have no opportunity to go to court for justice. They have to go out to the streets. I think that the main stimulus for a revolutionary scenario developing in the country is Putin. But the ruling party is holding strong eager to enter elections renewed and reinforced. Lee Barker, Al Jazeera, Moscow. So is this good or bad for Russia? Well, let's talk to our three guests about that from Moscow. Via Chaslev Matuzov, a former Russian diplomat and political analyst, also from Moscow. Sergei Strokon, political commentator and columnist at Kommersant newspaper. And in London, Martin McCauley, a professor of history and politics at London University and the author of several books on Russia. A very big welcome to the program, gentlemen. Mr. Matuzov, is this a triumph for democracy or a farce? Uh, no, I don't think that it is uh, uh, I I connected with democratic practice in Russian Federation. I don't think that Boris Nemtsov and other people who are now demonstrating in uh, different streets in Moscow uh, reflect uh, the real uh, uh, public opinion uh, that is uh, dominating in Russian Federation. Because uh, as a northern person in here in Russia, I can say that in all my contacts with the people in the street, in the offices, in the uh, middle business, I can conclude that 
people are not against uh, this nomination um, of Vladimir Putin as a uh, candidate for presidency in the Russian Federation. Why? Because uh, he established himself, his image in Russia as a, a, a decisive person, as a person who has a will, a person ha that has uh, a capability, political capability to defend national interests of Russia in all this very turbulent world that we are watching today, uh, beginning in, uh, from Europe and uh, to the Middle East, to the uh, Islamic world and uh, Asia and Africa and so on. We believe that uh, Dmitry, uh, Vladimir Putin is a good person, uh, person for uh, ruling Russia in this uh, very uh, uh, turbulent time. And I consider that uh, uh, his nomination will give uh, us a chance to come out of this uh, 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 gap that we find ourselves after ruining the Soviet Union. Uh, I, I understand why the Western countries, the United States, dislike him. They also uh, have uh, some uh, um, uh, instruments inside Russian political establishment because they have very strong pro-American lobby in Russian Federation. Uh, they are paid, they are uh, politically uh, uh, supported by uh, the United States, uh, uh, different commercial and uh, non-governmental structures. But uh, they don't ca have any real position. Real position today with Vladimir Putin. I believe that uh, he doesn't need even any kind of uh, uh, administrative uh, uh, measures to, 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 to win. I think that uh, his w win is uh, absolutely clear. OK, for let's all, pick uh, through. You've thrown objective. up so many points there, so let me try and pick through a few of them, if I may. Uh, Mr. Stroka, Mr. Matuzov said that uh, Nemtsov, he's one of the opposition leaders, his response doesn't really reflect what people on the streets are, of Russia are saying. They're actually pleased that Putin's going to be taking the top job. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, obviously, Boris Nemtsov represents uh, obscure, though, though, though very, very active part of, of Russian opposition. And uh, uh, obviously, these people are sidelined from the political process. They are not involved in, in it. And uh, uh, as a result of that, uh, we can understand their frustration, their anger. As to what extent they reflect uh, the dominant mood, I don't think that they actually reflect the dominant mood. By, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we can't simply bypass and ignore, ignore what is said by them, because they really uh, pinpoint all those limitations of Russia's democracy. So y you were posing, asking initial question whether it is a triumph for Russian democracy or not. Let me put it this way. Uh, this looks like a puzzle for Russian democracy. And uh, the key point is how we are going to define Russian democracy. Uh, as you know, in Russia, there's a concept of sovereign democracy or managed democracy. Uh, some say that this is not a democracy at all. Others argue that this is actually the, the, that democracy which Russia needs at the moment. But we have to agree that uh, unlike in the United States, where President Obama is fighting tooth and nail for re-election, and uh, uh, this is really not a this is really a bumpy road for them. Th this will be not a case with, with, with Vladimir Putin. And while presidential election is slated sli slated for March 2012, the name of the president is already known now. Some. So some w w would say that, that uh, th th this is ridiculous. Others would say that this is just uh, the, uh, a golden opportunity for Russia just to, to uh, 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 consolidate its uh, uh, sovereign democracy. But, but, but still, th th this is how things stand here, wh wh whether you like it or not. OK, Mr. McCauley, do you think that this is ridiculous or a golden opportunity? It's a golden opportunity because it, it's the, the Russian concept of democracy is different from the West European or American concept. Uh, in the West, uh, political parties fight one another and so on. And that is regarded as positive. Out of that comes something better. The Russians see that as leading to anarchy and chaos. Now, if, if you're standing in Moscow and you're looking at the European Union and you look at the inability of the 17 member states of the, Europe, of the Euro group 
to reach any agreement, you would say they need a strong leader. Europe needs a leader. Uh, the European Union lacks leadership. What they desperately need is somebody to actually give uh, a strong lead and for the others to follow. If you look at the United States, you've got the Republicans and the Democrats fighting one another to a standstill. Uh, America's in paralysis uh, because the uh, presidential elections will come up next year and the Republicans are not going to agree to anything that the Democrats ask. They don't want the, Russian, the, the American economy to improve because the worse the economy becomes, the better the chance there is for a Republican to take over. So are so you America saying, really if I can jump in here, that this two-headed leadership, if you can call it that, this, it's been called tandemocracy, is actually a good thing? I think at present uh, it's a good thing for Russia because we're in a very, very difficult period. Uh, the Russian economy is in good shape. Uh, they've got over four hundred billion good shape, dollars in, in reserves. Sorry. You say it's in a good shape. It's not doing well at all. It, yes, but you, uh, if you look at the uh, four hundred billion dollars in in uh, currency reserves, uh, the 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 largest exporter of oil, the gas, the gold, diamonds, timber, everything. Uh, they are earning money from those things. The, with the world economy growing, hopefully, uh, in the future, uh, more and more money will come in. Uh, what is weak is, in fact, the industrial economy in Russia. Russia is losing industrial competitiveness. If you look at the military economy, the Russian military has now conceded that in order to get high-tech weapons, cutting-edge technology, it must buy these uh, abroad, uh, uh, starting with the, the Navy and so on. So in the past, they were able to provide these things. So from that point of view, Russian industry is not, being, is not competitive. In fact, it's declining and so on. But if you look at raw materials, uh, if you look at hydrocarbons, Russia is in a very strong position. Let's throw that to Mr. Matuzov. Uh, Russia is not competitive on the international stage, is it? I mean, something needs to change quite dramatically. Uh, they don't, we cannot change dramatically our international course. Why? Because we are part of a uh, family of worlds, uh, of, of this world. And I don't think that uh, priorities in uh, uh, our policy, external policy, internal policy will be changed dramatically. I believe that in, uh, on, on the international level, we'll be have the same kind of privileges uh, because we cannot ignore our relations, for example, with the United States, the greatest power in the world. And uh, we cannot ignore our relations with the Islamic world because they are not our neighbors. They are part of us. Uh, we are Russians have Islamic world inside the Russian Federation. And then we, de we cannot ignore European country because Europe and Russia are closely connected economically. I agree with point of view that uh, Russia has great, great opportunities unities. They are, were not uh, used properly uh, uh, last 20 uh, years, but it is not our fault. It is bad management. I believe that in a uh, nomination of Mr. Putin by president of the, of the uh, Russian Federation will give us a chance to, uh, uh, to find a good solution of management problem in Russian Federation. I don't think that it took quite a lot of time to reconstruct our interest, industry. Industry exists, but it's in a poor situation because of bad management. Bad management because Boris Nemtsov, the same person, was 10 years uh, vice prime minister of Russia. Uh, he himself was nominated uh, by President uh, uh, Yeltsin as, as uh, his successor, even so. Uh, so he is not an opposition figure. He is a political figure that is loose, lost his political opportunity, and he's a loser, but not political opposition leader. Okay, well, let's uh, we talk don't about have political a opposition. opposition. And, yeah, exactly. Let me put that to Mr. Strokhan. I mean, why? There, there is no political opposition, is there? I mean, basically, we've got this, this job swap between two people. It seems that there's nobody else out there. Why not? Well, the question is still in there, and uh, uh, probably Russian society is not uh, ready yet for, 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 for full-fledged, you know, multi-party system and uh, an amazing variety of political have leaders. They, have, they than, uh, 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 have they been given an opportunity? Have they been given? Well, um, 
uh, how we are going to define the, the opportunity, you see. Uh, let me just cite you the recent example of Prava Dela or Right Course, which was initiated by billionaire uh, Mikhail Prokhorov. And uh, in fact, uh, 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 the, 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 initially it was considered a, a, as a project which would unite uh, liberally minded uh, uh, opposition uh, 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 political fig public and political figures, but uh, uh, after start, you know, in initially the, the project found itself in doldrums. You, see, you, you know, there was a scandal inside the party, so uh, Prokhorov left the party. So uh, you may ask me why did it happen, and I will tell you, it is not to, 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 to a, a, any pressure which came from Kremlin because it, it turned out that those people who considered them to be to be liberals or Democrats they uh, didn't show enough maturity you know they didn't show uh, uh, enough political will uh, uh, they showed uh, semi egoistic wills you, you, you know uh, uh, and they were not able to spell out uh, uh, coherent development strategy for the party so all in all after weeks of launch uh, the project died, you know, uh, and th this is a textbook example of the perils of Russian democracy. So uh, uh, we can't put uh, blame on, on Kremlin only, you know, so uh, when we, we speak about the problems of Russian democracy, still it will take time. I don't know okay, how, let me how many throw that years, to Mr. is, Mr. Is, is the problem for democracy, is it the oligarchs? Do they pose a big problem? I know that uh, <laughs> obviously UCOS is a, a case in point that springs to mind. The, the problem with democracy in Russia is that democracy is based on a strong middle class. If you look at uh, countries where you, which you would uh, define as strongly democratic, uh, there are always a, a strong middle class, which means that the economy has developed. They are involved in the economy and so on. Russia still has this middle class developing. And many of the members of the, uh, whom would you define as the middle class, income of course, many of them are state officials, they're bureaucrats and so on. You haven't yet got uh, a strong middle class which has come through. Uh, it will eventually as Russia develops and so on, but not at present. So therefore there's no point in saying where's the Liberal Party. One of the things that astonished me is that the Communist Party is so weak. Uh, I would have thought that Gennady Zuganov, uh, he'll obviously get into the Duma uh, and uh, uh, he's in a position where given the fact that uh, some people estimate that 40 percent of Russia's population are living worse than they were under the communists. There's a whole constituency there for the communists uh, which, are, which is not being mobilized. If Lenin were around today, he would mobilize them. But Zuganov and the communists the don't seem to be mobilizing their support. Excuse me interrupting you, Mr. McCauley. Isn't one of the problems the rampant corruption that we are seeing? at the highest levels. I mean, Transparency International, Transparency International said that Russia scored a 2.1 on its index, making it the most corrupt large nation on earth and as corrupt as the smaller nations of Southeast Asia and Libya. I mean, that certainly doesn't help money filter through to those who need it, does it? Yes, but always remember that political parties reflect interest groups. Those interest groups contain uh, people with money. Uh, if you look at the Republicans and the Democrats in America, uh, those are two parties dominated by big business uh, and Wall Street and so on. So politics, uh, democracy everywhere uh, is in fact linked very closely with business uh, and business finances, business finances, democracy and democratic parties and so on. So therefore looking at Russia, it's, I think it will take another generation before you get uh, the uh, political situation evolving into something like uh, a, a West European or, or uh, American format. At present, money buys power. Money is always power. It certainly uh, and does. And you have something like... Yeah, let me put that does, to Mr. Uh, you have something Ma like a thousand people. Yeah, carry on. A thousand people who run Russia. And they have the money. They, they, they can uh, uh, buy influence and so on. It's very, very difficult. How does a party... Uh, if you set up a party, Prokhorov set up a party, he's a billionaire. One wonders why he did that, because uh, he was onto a loser. Perhaps he was trying to bring together interest groups within the middle class, within the rich uh, class and so on. But it failed. Uh, every attempt in Russia that has been to develop uh, a Western style party has failed because the average Russian is not really interested. I'm astonished, for instance, that social democracy hasn't developed in Russia. You'd expect post-communism 
uh, with a Marxist tradition, uh, uh, you'd expect uh, a social democratic party to have a wide uh, resonance. But there is no social democratic party which has any impact and so on. Look at the okay, impact can, of Can Robert I jump Trump. in, if, if you don't Practice mind? I'd like, to, I'd like to stay with the money and speak to Mr. Matuzov. Uh, Putin is restyling himself as an economic reformer. Many of the economic critics say actually that this will take Russia back. Do you think he's in the position now to bring the economic reform so needed in the country? Well, we, I can say that we are need not uh, economic reform. Uh, the word reform uh, now sounds in Russia uh, very badly because uh, all reforms that we watched du during 20 years uh, ruined our industry on the slogan of needed reforms. Uh, Putin is stabilizer of Russian economy. Well, that we hope. Putin can uh, manage to uh, bring Russian economy to a, a, a certain uh, uh, framework of rules uh, under the, the law. And we hope that this bandit capitalism that was provided for Russia uh, after ruining Soviet Union and the uh, Chicago uh, uh, thinkers that were coming to as, a, uh, as an advisor to Mr. Yeltsin and they created this bandit capitalism in Russia with this uh, Mikhail Prokhorov, with Kurshevel guy who was blamed in Russia. He's billionaire, but billionaire, he doesn't know how to, to use his billion billions because he didn't work them. He received these billions by hand by the Nemtsov and Chubais and other uh, revolutionaries in 1991. So uh, we hope and uh, prestige of Putin based on his belief that he has managed to establish right economical framework. He has an experience in economy while he was uh, uh, five years in uh, ruling uh, our government. And he has uh, experience in different kind of uh, sections of our economy. And we hope, as Russian people, we hope that he can manage to bring Russia from this big gap we found themselves after creation of Russian Federation. Okay, Mr. Strokan, do you think that Putin can bring about those changes? I mean, uh, some of his critics are warning that his economic and political reforms, if he does indeed bring them in, what? could provoke unrest in the country. Do you agree with that? Uh, well, well, ju just uh, 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 as a follow-up to what my colleague said, I, I want to make a, a qual clarification. I don't think that uh, the explanation of, of Russia's problems are that simple, you know, and it can be attributed to Yeltsin's time and the time of, of Boris Nemtsov when, when Nemtsov was a, a, a vice premier. So my colleague was referring to 20 years, uh, but out of the, let us be frank, out of the 20 years, uh, uh, for eight years, uh, Russia's president was Vladimir Putin, and after that he acted in the capacity of all-powerful Russia's uh, prime minister. So, so all in all, out of the time, half of the time we lived uh, in the in the time frame of what was considered to be Putinism uh, during the time of pre uh, Putin's presidency and then the pre presidency of Dmitry Medvedev, we were unable to make a dramatic shift from. Uh, 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 oil ex and gas expert oriented economy. Okay, Mr. Stokin, yes, we I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you because we're running yeah. out of time. I just want to put a last question to Mr. McCauley. We know that Mr. Putin has got a, a good chest and that he's promising a, a strong Russia. How important is a strong Russia to the rest of the world? It's very, very important because Russia provides a lot of oil and gas and so on. And the last thing in the world you, you want is instability in Russia. To go back to uh, the late 19, uh, uh, the last two years of communism and the beginning of the Yeltsin era. Uh, Europe doesn't need that. Uh, the world doesn't need that. They need a strong Russia and a strong leader. To go back to the problem of reform, the word reformer in Russian is a bad word. I would use the word restructure. Uh, uh, and Putin does not have a, uh, a very good record when it comes to restructuring the economy and so on because 
he is not the person who really implements that decision. Uh, the decision will be implemented by the industrialists and by the oligarchs. Okay. And they basically like things as they are at present, and they're doing very well out of that. And let's leave it on that note. Martin McCauley, thank you very much for talking to us from London. Mr. Vyacheslav Matuzov from Moscow, also from Moscow, Sergei Strokhan. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It was very interesting. And thank you, of course, for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions, please email them to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye.